coming up on The World Today. Countries in Europe reinstate COVID restrictions as Omicron variant spreads. South African research suggests the new coronavirus variant is milder than other strains. Plus, up to 100 missing in Miami mine landslide. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Tenyo Lash Shiboale. We begin in Europe where the government has bought an extra 4.25 million doses of antivirals to help the NHS fight the latest COVID wave. The country's health secretary says the additional drugs will be made available to the public early next year. Today's announcement is about further building those defences by the contracts that I've signed today, which are for four and a quarter million additional doses of antivirals. These are special drugs that have been developed specifically uh, for COVID. They're particularly valuable to those that are, uh, that are vulnerable to COVID than others, those that are immunosuppressed. It will certainly help to keep lots of people out of hospital. And uh, this four and a quarter million additional doses is on top of the 730,000 we'd already purchased, so almost 5 million doses now. These, are, these are antivirals are significant new defences. Of course, we haven't had these uh, before. The, uh, the, one of these antivirals uh, that's already been approved by our regulator was, uh, was quite recent, and so it's the first time we've got this type of defence as well. But when you add this, the what are called the monoclonal antibodies that I saw here uh, being offered to, to patients that were vulnerable here at St. George's Hospital alongside the booster program, these pharmaceutical defenses you're taken together are a huge new way to defend ourselves against COVID. <laughs> Well, a new South African study, along with data on hospitalizations and deaths in the country's fourth wave of COVID infections, suggests that the risk of severe disease is lower with Omicron than with previous variants. Professor Cheryl Cohen of the National Institute for Communicable Diseases, one of the authors of the new study, says data suggests a positive story of a reduced severity of Omicron compared to other variants. Medical experts say South Africa's noticeable drop in new COVID-19 cases in recent days may signal that the country's dramatic Omicron-driven surge has passed its peak. The study, which has not yet been peer-reviewed, was carried out by South Africa's National Institute for Communicable Diseases and found that people diagnosed with Omicron in South Africa between October the 1st and the 30th of November were 80% less likely to be admitted to hospital than those diagnosed with other variants over the same period. Meanwhile, the Omicron variant is dashing the hopes of Zimbabweans hoping to come back home for Christmas. At this time, scores of Zimbabwean travellers would normally be packed at bus stations, rushing to get home from neighbouring South Africa to see their loved ones. However, bus drivers are seeing far less people than expected. On a normal Christmas, the undercarriage of Augustine Chibaya's bus would be packed with the belongings of Zimbabweans looking to make the at least 15-hour trip home from neighboring South Africa to see their families. Instead, it's empty. Bus drivers like Chibaya had been hoping for a bumper festive season to help their businesses, reliant on the steady stream of travelers between the two nations recover from COVID-19. However, the emergence of Omicron prompted Zimbabwe to introduce mandatory quarantine for arrivals, forcing many to cancel their plans. Yes, since the COVID started, we don't have a business. You look as you see, it's very quiet on the boat. I have look, no business. And this is uh, this uh, quarantine. This is COVID killing our business. So people they are scared when they go into Zimbabwe. They are getting quarantine. So no one business as usual. It's compared. Another year is This year there's no business. For Albert Maweri, a local bus driver, the last two years have been extremely difficult, having last seen his family and children in 2018 due to financial constraints. 
He's determined to travel despite the quarantine mandate. When himself and his wife arrive in Zimbabwe, he had to also borrow money in order to afford their quarantine costs. I'm going to travel three days, you see. And uh, you see, as they say, that uh, when they quarantine us, we must uh, use our own, uh, you see, yeah, money, you see. Yeah, we are prepared to do that, you see, because we stayed a long time here in South Africa, you see. So we must see our, our parents also, yeah. Augustine Chibaya's firm would normally send four buses per day with up to 60 passengers during December. Now it sends one, sometimes with as few as five people on board. He and all the drivers at Central Johannesburg bus station say the loss of business has affected their ability to support their families. Micron surge has affected business a lot because quite a, quite, quite a number of people are no longer able to travel. And uh, also on our side, we cannot be able to make uh, plans for the holiday, considering that we have to, uh, especially the issues of quarantine, uh, if you get into quarantine now, it's, it's going to take about 14 days and then the holiday is all already over. Unfortunately, the hope of these drivers for a bumper festive season has been deemed and they wonder when things will change back to normal. And over in Australia, Prime Minister Scott Morrison has ruled out a Christmas lockdown, saying hospitals are coping well with a record surge in COVID-19 cases fueled by the Omicron variant. Australia is grappling with the more transmissible Omicron variant of the coronavirus as restrictions ease ahead of the Christmas holidays after higher vaccination levels were reached. Even as daily infections surge to record levels, hospitalization and death rates remain low compared with those seen during a wave of cases from the Delta wave and Prime Minister Scott Morrison says there would be no more lockdowns. Instead, he insists that limiting the spread of the virus comes down to personal responsibility. Stay calm, get your booster, follow the common sense behavioural measures as you're going into Christmas and we look forward to that. Australians have worked very hard to have this Christmas together and we want to protect that. One of the things we agreed today is we're not going back to lockdowns. We do not want to go back to lockdowns. And that's why all of these things and the steps we're taking today together in a very calm, methodical, scientifically informed way can mean that Australians can go into this break knowing that Australia is arguably better prepared to deal with this than almost any other country in the world. Mask wearing in indoor spaces in public areas is of course highly recommended. Whether it's mandated or not, that's what we should be doing. In the same way as we go into this summer season, people will be slapping on the hat and slapping on the sunscreen. Um, there's no rule or, or requirement to do that, but it is strongly recommended health advice. It's in the same category. And so Australians are common sense people and they know what they need to do to protect their own health. Thank you very much, everyone. I'll get my... Turkey's health ministry has announced that the country's domestically developed COVID-19 vaccine, Turkovac, has received emergency use authorization by Turkish authorities and will be open to use from next weekend. Turkey began developing Turkovac this year. The launch date for the vaccine has been beset by delays. President Tayyip Erdogan has said Turkey would make the shot available globally. Turkey has already administered more than 125 million doses of vaccines using shots developed by China's Sinovac and by Pfizer-BioNTech, with more than 51 million having received two doses of the vaccines. It has also begun administering boost the shots. Turkey's daily infection numbers have hovered around 20,000, while the daily death toll remains near 200. In the meantime, Israel has announced that it will become the first country to roll out a fourth dose of the COVID-19 vaccine as the country prepares for a wave of infections driven by the new Omicron variant. Israel's pandemic experts have recommended a fourth booster for the over 60s and health workers. Prime Minister Naftali Bennett has welcomed the plan and has told officials to start preparing. 
This comes as Israel confirmed the first known death of a patient with the Omicron strain on Tuesday. The health ministry says there are at least 340 known cases of the variant in the country. I'm basically, I'm very unhappy that it, the three is not going to be enough, but I'm over 60, I'm at risk, and I'm going to do it because I just don't want to get the virus. As the Omicron variant continues to spread across Europe, leaders are reinstating coronavirus restrictions. Germany and Portugal are among nations announcing post-Christmas curbs and greater social distancing measures. Omicron is already the dominant version in many countries in the region. Here's more on the measures being introduced in Europe. Wales has followed Scotland in announcing post-Christmas COVID restrictions. A maximum of six people will be allowed to meet in pubs, cinemas and restaurants, and two meters social distancing will return. All Alert Level 2 measures, including retail and workplaces and the closure of nightclubs, will come into force from 6 a.m. on Boxing Day. The new measures will mean a general requirement of a two-meter social distancing in all premises open to the public and in workplaces subject to that test of reasonable measures. Germany has announced that from December the 28th, limits will return that restrict private gatherings to 10 people and nightclubs will close. Football matches from that date will also be played behind closed doors. And Portugal has ordered bars and nightclubs to shut from December the 26th and has made working from home obligatory from that date until January the 9th. Outdoor gatherings will be limited to 10 people. The streets of the Netherlands are largely deserted as the country undergoes its fourth day of lockdown aimed at stemming an expected COVID-19 surge caused by the fast-spreading Omicron variant. The British government has reduced the COVID-19 self-isolation period to seven days from ten days for people in England who get a negative result on a lateral flow test two days in a row. With the Omicron variant spreading rapidly in Britain and record levels of cases over the past week, many industries are struggling with staff shortages, including hospitals who have warned of the risk of an impact on patient safety. Uh, so today we will be cutting the self-isolation period from 10 days to 7 days for those people that take a lateral flow test on day 6 and day 7 and the result of both those tests are negative. Uh, this decision has been informed by the advice from our clinicians at the UK Health Security Agency who have looked at this uh, very carefully and uh, they are uh, very comfortable uh, that the protection that's provided by making this change uh, so that people can leave uh, isolation after day seven as long as they've taken these two lateral flow tests and the results are negative that the protection it provides is very similar to 10 days of isolation without tests. France's health minister Olivier Véran says the country could soon have around 100,000 new COVID-19 cases a day, up from around 70,000 currently as the country battles a fifth wave of the pandemic. He also says the Omicron variant will be the dominant strain of COVID in France by early January. Europe has already seen more than 89 million cases and 1.5 million COVID-related deaths. The World Health Organization warns that the surge in cases will push health systems towards the brink of collapse. And still to come on the program. Lucky number 86148 brings joy to Madrid in Spain's Christmas lottery draw. More details in a moment. Please stay with us. Thanks for staying with us still on the COVID-19 pandemic. Japan has reported its first instance of community spread infection from the Omicron variant of the coronavirus. Osaka Governor Irofumi Yoshimura says the cases are from the same family and none of the people had traveled abroad. As Omicron fares grow, the world's third largest economy has tightened up border restrictions and promises to speed up booster shots. 
South Korea is almost doubling its hospital bed capacity for COVID cases as the number of people critically ill with the virus reaches a record high. Prime Minister Kim Bo-kyum said 10,000 more beds will be secured by the middle of next month. Some public hospitals will be solely dedicated to treating people with COVID-19. On Tuesday, the country recorded 7,456 COVID-19 cases. As many as 100 people are feared missing after a landslide at a jade mine in Miyama. Rescue teams are desperately searching for people in a nearby lake, with most victims believed to be illegal miners. One person is confirmed dead. The landslide occurred in the Hakant area of northern Kachin State. Miyama is the world's biggest source of jade, but its mines have seen numerous accidents. The landslide is believed to have been caused by an overflow of rubble discarded from lorries to the open pit mines. And residents of a Philippines province hit by typhoon rise say the region is barely recognizable after leaving a trail of destruction. Typhoon rise made landfall last Thursday, killing nearly 400 people and affecting 1.8 million, displacing 630,000 of them. It's the strongest typhoon to hit the region this year. I was devastated when I first saw the aftermath. Surigao is barely recognizable at the moment. It's heartbreaking. But at the same time, seeing the destruction also made me mad because it made me realize that we've become the victims of the climate crisis that most people try to ignore. The supplies here are dwindling, so people are literally fighting for resources such as food, water, and gasoline. In fact, other people are so desperate to the point that there have been multiple cases of looting commercial areas. I think what people need the most are food and reception. Ever since the typhoon landed, we haven't received any relief goods yet. In fact, people are saying that they might have survived the typhoon, but they're not sure if they'll survive starvation. Apart from the food, People also need reception. Most of the communication lines are down, so there is a communication block. We really need the signal towers back so we can know the extent of the damage, the number of the casualties, and the like. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan has told Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett that both countries are at a critical point on various security issues and should develop a joint strategy. Prime Minister Bennett's office says the two discussed Iran and world powers' efforts to renew the 2015 nuclear deal. Okay, so, uh, I, I... Prime Minister, how are you? Very good to see you. Very good for having you. me. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, so, uh, welcome to Jerusalem, uh, Jake. Uh, I'm very happy to have you over, and I know that we're just uh, a couple of days before the holidays, so uh, I, I all the more appreciate you coming over. You know, I want to say that the relationship uh, between uh, my government and uh, the Biden administration, between Israel and the United States, is uh, as strong as ever. And being so strong and having this uh, meaningful friendship means that we can also talk openly uh, and candidly about all the shared uh, challenges that we're facing. Um, and that's what we're going to do. The, uh, these days are pretty important. What, what happens in Vienna has uh, profound ramifications for the stability of the Middle East and uh, the security of Israel for the upcoming years. And that's why it's uh, such a timely meeting. Uh, finally, I want to take this opportunity to wish you and your family uh, to wish uh, President Biden and the First Lady and to wish the great people of the United States a uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. It's going to be a good day. Well, thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. And I bring personal greetings from President Biden and from Dr. Biden, who wanted me to extend to you their warm wishes. And um, they asked me to come here this week, uh, even just before Christmas, because uh, at a critical juncture for both of our countries on a, a major set of security issues, it's important that we sit together and develop a common strategy, a common outlook, and find a way forward that 
fundamentally secures your country's interests and mine. And we believe those interests, like the values upon which our countries are built, are deeply shared and deeply felt. The European Commission has launched an infringement procedure against Poland over rulings by the country's constitutional tribunal in July and October that challenged the primacy of EU law over national law. European Commissioner Paolo Gentiloni says the rulings deprived individuals in Polish courts of their legal guarantees in the Treaty of the EU. We also consider tribunal. Then the college decided to launch infringement proceedings against Poland because of serious concerns with respect to the Polish Constitutional Tribunal and its recent case law. The Commission considers that the Constitutional Tribunal has breached Article 19, Paragraph 1 of the Treaty of the European Union in two of its recent decisions. As a consequence, it deprives individuals before Polish courts from the full guarantee set out in that provision. And now an ice cave which forms naturally on a high altitude glacier in the Swiss Alps has brought delight to nature lovers. The bluish cave, which varies in shape each year, has a rounded ceiling made of thick ice about 5 metres high and is about 20 metres long. The natural cave is also known as the mill. Each spring and summer, the cavity fills with water from the snow melt, forming a lake. In autumn, the plug disappears and the water drains leaving the cave. No, it's amazing to, to feel the cold inside, the, the cold air, the fresh air and to see what nature possible what uh, does nature make with the glaciers or what the climate change makes so it's open because of this and it's amazing to see all these this eyes this the glacier open to open yeah it's amazing it's yeah. just to to feel to feel how small you are in this cave in this um, environment that's amazing yeah. And our lucky number 86148 has brought joy to Madrid today as the children from San Adolfonso School called the first prize in Spain's Christmas lottery draw. The number was mainly sold in a lottery shop inside a Torches train station. The crowd attending the draw at Spain's Royal Theatre burst into applause as one of the girls broke in tears while calling first prize. Known as El Gordo, that's the fat one in English, the colourful tradition dates back to 1812 and enjoys mass participation from people eager for a piece of the sizable price pot which this year reached 2.41 billion euros. In the months leading up to the December 22nd draw, which gives out many small prizes rather than one big jackpot, residents club together with friends, family or colleagues to buy tickets, often favouring particular vendors or significant numbers. And still in the Christmas spirit, uh, facing a familiar pandemic doom as the Omicron variant spreads, many are deciding the best choice is to push on with holiday traditions. That's the attitude in the Darker Heights neighborhood of Brooklyn as visitors from near and far pay a visit to the famed Christmas house light show. The Christmas chair, however, comes as New York begins to limit its traditional New Year celebration with the spread of the Omicron variant. And that's the program today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Tenny Olash. Shabu Ali. Bye for now.